Hello and welcome to the seventh video in the tutorial series of programming in the C language. In this video I've started with a new clean file called uh, ch7.c and I've got the main empty program structure that we're used to now along with two variables, integer variables, one called count, one called index and a print statement, a printf statement on the end just saying end so we know where the program has ended. In this video we're going to cover looping. There are three different types of loops in C, all very easy to use, the for loop, the while loop and the do while loop. If we look first at the for loop, the structure of the for loop, I'm just going to type it out first and then discuss it. I'm going to say index equals 2, semicolon, index is less than 6, index plus plus, so increment index by 1, and then associate with this for loop a code block. So, what looping is, is exactly what the name says. It's code that gets executed a number of specified times. In this case for the for loop, it'll be code that's inside this code block here, specified by the curly braces here. So the number of loops that we executed is determined by what's inside the brackets that come after the for statement. Before the first semicolon, is the starting variable for you setting your counter variable for the loop. In this case, we're using index. So we start our loops with index being a value of 2. It's set here to a value of 2. This middle statement between the semicolons here is the test condition to execute whether or not the for loop statement can execute the code inside this block i.e. can we do another loop, yes or no? If not, then the program just carries on from line 12 onwards. And the test condition here is, is index less than 6? Now at the start, obviously it is, it's 2. So this test condition is OK. So the code inside this code block is then executed. Once this code has been executed in this code block, the third statement here, so after the second semicolon comes into action, and our counter variable for the loop, index, is incremented by 1. So in this case, becomes 3. And then the whole process starts again. Once it's incremented, it goes back to this test condition here. Is it less than 6? If it is, executes a block, increments again, and so on between those two. Can I loop? Yes or no. Execute the block. Perform the statement after this semicolon. Then ask again. Can I execute the code? Yes or no. And so on. So I'll just put a simple print statement in, so you can uh, see exactly what's going on here. I'll call it for loop and index, and I'll put a new line on the end of this as well, so we don't end up completely confused, and save. So now I'll go and compile this program here, and you can see a little bit more what's going on. So here you see for loop index is 2, it starts at 2. Then it's incremented. Is it less than 6? Yes. So the next, so the block of code is executed again. Now index is 3. Then it's incremented to 4. Is it OK? Yes. Execute and so on until it has the value of 5. And when it has the value of 5 and reaches the end, it's then incremented and the value is 6 and it no longer satisfies this condition and the for loop ends. Similarly, we have something called the while loop. I'll set index back to 2 here, and the way the while loop works is it asks while, and then open and close brackets, a condition, in this case again index is less than 6, is true, then, like with the for loop, execute the code inside the bracket here, which will be exactly the same code as for the for loop, except we'll call this the while loop. Now a gotcha with the while loop, you may be looking at this and thinking, OK, it's going to loop. But you'll probably have noticed it doesn't have any increment in here. So I lift the, if I leave the code exactly the same as it is here, we would have index being set to 2, and it would say, while index is less than 6, execute the code in this code block. So it would print while loop index value of 2, come round, test the condition, while well, index is 2, so it will print while loop index 2, and so on infinitely. would never stop until I press Ctrl and C in the console and killed the program. So you need to be careful with while loops, and we actually need to put the increment in underneath here, so it executes OK. So I'll just compile and run that. 
and you can see that we have exactly the same output for the for and while loops here. And you may ask why we have both of them. Well, one, it's a matter of taste. Two, depending on exactly what you're doing, the performance of both of them can differ depending on how the compiler then translates your code you've written into machine code. And also, you'll see in a bit when we look at breaking out of loops and continuing loops, there are, there are applications where the while loop is more suited and easier to read than the for loop. I personally often find the while loop easier to read than the for loop. But essentially, they do the same thing. The third kind of loop is something called the do while loop. And this is written as so. You have do and then the code block and then while and then again the test case index is less than 6 oops sorry that should be index equals 2 and I'll just put exactly the same codes from the while loop in here with the increment and call it the do while loop okay so if I now compile this code, and I've forgotten to put a semicolon on the end of here, and run, you can now see we have exactly the same output from the do while loop, but there is a very subtle difference with the do while loop. The way the, do, the, way the for and the while loop work is they first of all test the condition. So in both cases, is index less than 6? If so, then execute the code in the code block. The do while loop, however, is the opposite way around. It executes the code in the code block and then says, can I do another execution? Yes or no, which is defined by this while statement here. So in the case of the do loop, it's saying index is 2, so print index is 2, increment to 3. Is it less than 6? Yes, and so on. So at the moment, it gives us the same output. But let's look what happens if we say in the for loop, index is 6 to start with. In the while loop, index is 6 to start with. And for the do well, index is 6 to start with. Now, because index is starting with 6, the first question a for loop asks is, is it less than 6? If so, I can execute the code block. Well, it isn't less than 6, so nothing will be printed. The same for the while loop, index is 6. The first question is, is index less than 6? No, it isn't, so nothing will be printed. But the do while loop, index is 6, will then print index is 6, increment it to 7, and then say, is it less than 6 so I can do another loop? The answer is no. So we'll actually get a line printed here from the do while loop. And here you can see when I run the program, we've got one line printed with the index of value of 6. So it's a very subtle but important difference between the for and the while loop and the do while loop. And you might ask yourself, why would I ever want to use the do while loop? Well, there are plenty of circumstances where you absolutely want to execute some code but depending on the result of that code, you might want to keep executing that code again and again and again until a certain condition is satisfied. But you do want to execute that code at least once. In that case, the do while loop is applicable. OK, there's one more little thing to look at with loops. And that is breaking and continuing. I will now use the count variable. So I'm just going to type in here count and the semicolon and the format specifier and count here as well on this print statement so we increment and I'm also going to increment count here and set index back to let's set it to zero in this case so if I compile this program and run it we get count and index being the same but the test variable for this while loop is index but what if say we say we want to continue whilst index is less than 100 so if I now compile this program and run it, we get a load of loops printed right up to the value of 99. OK. Now, what I can do, and often you will do in programs, because the while loop is something that's often used for, say, let's say, getting user input in a game. When you start a game, you only want the game to end when the user has pressed quit. So you could say, while user input is not equal to quit, then keep looping and processing input. And only when quit is entered do you then break out of the loop. So how you do that is actually very easy. If I put something here saying if count is greater than 10, let's say 11 here, 
so that we get 10 because it'll have been incremented. Sorry, no, greater than 10. Then, break. So what this will do here, this break, when it's inside a loop, means from this point, no more code in the loop will be executed and we'll simply move past the code bot belonging. So we won't go back and test the condition up above anymore. We'll simply leave at this point and ignore everything else that's underneath it. So I'll make a little printf here and say breaking I did something strange there because I can't get used to typing these backslashes on a Mac keyboard. I have to use strange key combinations to get it done. So I'll put breaking here when count is greater than 10. And now I'll just compile that program so you can see how it runs. And here you can see now count has hit 10. It's then printed here. It's then incremented to 11. And now this says if count is greater than 10, which it is, then break. And it does. And it's not printing. Uh, it's not doing anything else or, or printing and uh, looping again, going back to the start of the while loop. It's simply left the while loop and gone straight on to this next part of code here. OK, so that's one interesting thing that you can do in loops. And one essential thing often is to break out of loops. And like I said, the while loop is often used for conditions where it will keep looping infinitely. And there'll be a number of statements inside the loop that says, if a certain condition is satisfied, then do something and then break out of the loop. Another thing you can do, you can continue. So you can say if, let's say, index equals 4 and a code block for the if statement, we can put something, I'm just going to copy for speed here, the co called continue. And cont what continue does, it says here, if index is equal to 4, then print cont to the console and then continue. And what continue does is ignores all the rest of the code in the code block, like the break statement, and goes back up to this test condition to execute another loop. So what it won't do in this case is increment count. So count will actually stay the same, but index has been incremented. So if I then show you this by running it, compiling it and then running it, You'll see here that we've got our continue here. So we've got index naught, count naught, one, one, two, two, three, three. Index is then incremented, so it's now four. And then we continue, so we don't get to increment count. And the next time we then start the loop, you can see that index is four, but count is still three. And then when count hits 10, it's then incremented, so it's 11, and then we break from our loop. So that's how you use continue and break statements in loops. So in this video we've covered the for loop, the while loop, the do while loop with a subtle difference that the do while executes its code block before testing whether it can go into a following loop. And we've covered how to continue in the loop, so ignore all the remaining code and just go to the next loop and also how to break out of a loop. Good, so in, that's the end of this video. In the next video we'll have a look at responding a bit more to different types of user input and using this input to play a little bit with looping and variables and then the video after that will then start moving on to looking at arrays thank you very much i hope the video made some sort of sense and see you next time comments questions criticisms welcome as always on youtube